Uh, the second talk uh, is entitled On the Low Key la uh, Randomization and Key Equivalence Hypothesis in Matsui's Algorithm 2. The authors are uh, Andrea Bolzanov and Elma uh, Tischhauser from Technical University of Denmark and Catholic University of Berlin. Yes. And Andrea will give a talk. Then we have uh, linear approximation, and then we can compute uh, the probability of um, this linear approximation. And then, uh, usually in linear cryptanalysis, we are dealing with something like bias or correlation value, which is basically two probabilities for the linear uh, approximation to hold minus one. Yeah, so up to a factor of two, it's also uh, what is called bias. <laughs> and then, in Matsui's algorithm 2, what we do, uh, we try to fill off some rounds, uh, maybe at the end of uh, the cipher, and also in the beginning of the cipher, uh, and we are using multiple input um, output pairs uh, to distinguish this part from random. Once we have guessed uh, partial key. And now, uh, for uh, our right key, uh, we want the counter that uh, counts how many times the uh, linear approximation is uh, actually fulfilled to deviate uh, significantly from n over 2. And n is our data complexity for the number of uh, inputs output pairs. So, once again, for each of the candidate keys uh, for each of our key guesses for uh, the partial key we made a counter then uh, we implemented once uh, the linear smashing uh, is satisfied uh, and it's uh, the base of our distinguisher so we expect the counter for the right key to be somehow sticking up and uh, to formalize it a bit more, Selchuk proposed uh, to consider this notion of advantage. So, for instance, if we want our counter for the right key, T0, to be among the top, to the R uh, counters on our list after we uh, have run our tests, then um, uh, we also can guess m bits in the last round key, or I mean, in the, in the uh, keys we actually guess, so it can be also the top round. But let's say for the moment it's only the last round. Then the advantage uh, a is defined as m minus r. Uh, that is, it corresponds to the number of bits gained uh, in the attack. Okay, and then Selchuk proposed uh, this formula for uh, the estimation of the, of the success probability of the attack, which combines um, the data complexity, the bias, yeah, or correlation, 
and the event. So uh, this combined all together gives you usually a nice curve uh, for your uh, complexity. But it's based on uh, several essential assumptions. First of all, all the counters are independent. But secondly, and it's exactly the point that uh, we'll be drilling uh, here, is that for wrong key guesses, the approximation has reference zero. Yeah? Or uh, that the uh, approximation for wrong key guesses is unbiased. Yeah? Of course, entropy is a so uh, this can be formulated as a standard wrong key visualization type of thesis, which basically says that whatever um, the value is for the wrong key, the uh, linear approximation is unbiased. And of course, uh, we know from very, uh, from very early uh, results by O'Connor that uh, this is not true. Yeah? And actually, over the wrong keys, uh, the bias is normally distributed yeah? with uh, mean zero value and some non-zero variance, which is fairly small. But so we'll see which uh, impact is in that, uh, we have on our complexities. So basically, uh, you can see it holds uh, pretty tightly for some ciphers. We checked, so we checked small presence in uh, Python 6 with small uh, block size, and here you can see the sample for um, the correlation value over quite some wrong keys, and it's almost never exactly unbiased. Yeah. So, uh, what um, Selchuk assumed basically this distribution of the correlation or bias for the wrong keys. So it's around zero um, and the variance of this normal distribution is uh, 1 over n, where n is your uh, data complexity. Because you will get some noise from the fact that you are not using the full code. Yeah? So when you are estimating a correlation of bias value, you will get some noise. So this um, corresponds to the noise yeah, of that. And uh, for the right key, it will be your relation value uh, you have estimated and want to exploit. So what Celtic is missing here is that actually for different wrong keys, uh, this distribution will be more than and we can easily incorporate it into the model by just increasing uh, the variance. Yeah. So it means that this distribution is a bit wider, actually, for the wrong things. And this can be translated to um, some adjusted wrong key uh, relation hypothesis, which says that uh, the bias for the wrong keys that actually distributed and not constant. And this is our estimate for the recess probability of the senior attack. Uh, instead of Celtics one, so it basically says that here we have a factor. Yeah? And uh, if it can make a difference, we'll see now. Yeah? So let's consider this graph. And it's for small presence, 20 bits, so that we are still capable of computing the exact relation or bias uh, values, etc. So here it's important to see that this red curve with pluses, yeah, it's our exact experiment. So it's what you expect in the real life. Yeah. Now, if you take, uh, if you take uh, Salchuk's approximation you will get this blue curve. Yeah? If you take uh, our adjusted uh, estimation, you will get this green one. So uh, what the axes are, here we have this advantage bit, so number of key bits actually gain, 
right, in your attack, and here you have the data complexity, yeah, logarithmic. So, what this basically says is that um, up to some <coughs> value of the complexity and advantage, uh, the estimation by Seljuk is absolutely uh, adequate. Yeah? So it follows the experiments pretty tightly, but then after some point, when uh, the advantage grows and the data complexity increases, you have some discrepancy yeah, between the experiments actually and so, uh, is it significant? Well, so, uh, for instance, say that you claim that you have um, an attack close to the full code book, in that you can uh, extract something like six digits, and it's important for your attack, yeah? So, if you are using Seljuk's approximations, yeah, you would say that you can still do that. Actually, as the experiments in our um, estimation show, <coughs> it's no longer possible. Yeah? But you are actually getting less information about your key. So it's um, the idea here that once your data complexity grows, or uh, and you want to extract more bits from your uh, attack, yeah? or qubits from attack, there can be a difference. You want to be comfortable. OK, so that was the first part about the wrong keys. Now we're switching to the right keys. And for the right keys, the standard uh, key equivalence, yeah? key equivalence uh, hypothesis is that your uh, approximation has exactly the same value of bias for all keys, yeah? for all right keys. Uh, it's maybe a bit trivialized, but it's uh, what uh, cryptanalysts are using in many cases. Yeah? So, uh, and we know actually that um, it is not necessarily true, uh, for instance, for ciphers like field painting ciphers, yeah? where uh, we have this exact formula uh, of the dependency between the key value and uh, the bias. So what this basically says is that if you consider all the linear characteristics yeah, in your linear hull, uh, which are contributing some absolute bias value to uh, your bias for the entire linear approximation. Yeah? The signs of those contributions will actually depend on the key heaven. Yeah? Actually, the signs will be opposite for different values. Okay? Yeah? So U here is your linear characteristic assets, the concatenation of your intermediate linear masks, K, is a bit expanded. Okay, so now uh, the question arises actually uh, for the estimation of this, uh, what we have here, C0, yeah, this uh, bias for the right key. What uh, do we take? Which value? Uh, right key will correspond to the value of correlation we will be actually using uh, for the complexity estimation from the tag. And um, our proposal is to consider the linear hull statistically, so either uh, estimate it uh, for some uh, randomly chosen keys, or to use uh, ELP if you can do it. So what we do here is to split um, the linear hull into two parts. 
One part uh, is so-called signal, where we have some uh, dominant characteristics that we do consider specifically, and the other one is the rest. Yeah. And we estimate the signal part uh, exactly, or we evaluate the signal part uh, exactly for some um, values of the right key, and we account for the remaining part of the linear hull in a statistical manner, that, which is at some uh, readily value on top of that. And this can actually make a difference, yeah? Because now, if you see here, quite some uh, curves here, but what is important is uh, to see where the reality is, and the reality is exactly here, those pluses. So it's the, the exact experiment that we're getting at. Yeah? Now, if you use um, the estimation uh, for just one value of uh, C0. So it's the bias value for one fixed key. Yeah? Say you want to take a cipher, and then you want to estimate what um, your bias will be for the right side. What you would do in such a scenario, you would pick one key, for instance, all zeros, yeah, the expected key, and estimate your C0 for that. So, and actually, you might get such a curve for one fixed uh, key. Yeah. Okay, so just one fixed key for the estimation of your bias for the right key, which is uh, quite far from the reality. Yeah. So now we have the next approximation to the reality by averaging for the signal characteristics, for the dominant characteristics over many keys in key ciphers, such as present or AES, and then we get this curve, which is closer to the reality. And now if we additionally take into account this, yeah, the rest of the couple, then we are getting something which is even closer to that. So um, that is about the significance of mm, uh, accounting for many dominant characteristics in how if you have them, and for the rest of them in a statistical manner. Okay, so which brings me to my conclusions. Uh, we have revisited uh, the assumptions behind the complexity estimations for what's used out of two and the linear group analysis. And we basically derive uh, at two conclusions. There is more noise than previously assumed uh, due to the too optimistic wrong key optimization test phases, which uh, was used before. And it's also important to take the linear half into account when you're estimating uh, the bias value for your right. So we have some procedures in the paper how to actually estimate the test probability and the <coughs> using those adjusted uh, hypothesis. And especially it's relevant uh, if you want to attack uh, the highest number of rounds uh, you can and extract the highest number of qubits you can. Yeah? So their discrepancy is highest. Uh, but it's sort of where we are as cryptanalysts, many things. You want to stretch it as far as those so are. We think it's sort of uh, interesting at this point, at least.
Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I'm really, really accurate. It's 